and welcome to our session Paths for Transitioning to Sub S4HANA. My name is Roland Hamm. I'm working in the S4HANA development team. My role is a product manager and I'm focusing on defining and driving development activities to optimize those tools which you use actually for transitioning to S4HANA. The disclaimer, I will make some forward-looking statements. I will do this to my best knowledge, but maybe by the time we will realize that we may need to revise some of the other thing. This is an overview session. So it's uh, the starting point of two, uh, two learning maps, uh, transition to um, S4HANA and, and moving to the cloud. And uh, as such, the session will touch on things, will explain them and the major concepts. And wherever it's possible, I will show you also links to dedicated, more detailed sessions. So you will see this in, in a session to have, uh, also with those blue arrows, where you can see that there are the dedicated sessions for the one or the other topic. And in addition to this, I have put also as much as possible links to further information in this session. That happens on uh, most of the slides as well as in the appendix of this uh, session. You will find a, a couple of eight or nine slides where I have actually where I have a collection of useful information which you can read to the one or the other or the topic I'm going to touch here. Good, so let's start then with the session. Um, there will be several units I will go through. I will start actually with a short introduction into S4HANA. So what is special in the architecture and in the release strategy, which has an impact, of course, on, 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 on the transition scenario, transition options as such we offer. Then we have a look on the different transition options we, we offer, what are their characteristics, why would you choose the one or the other, and what are the, main, uh, to, uh, what are the main tools which we use for this. I will talk about what are simplifications and how you manage these things, and I will provide you some best practices and recommendations which you have collected from, some, or from, from a lot of our customer projects where we got the feedback either from our consulting actually or from the customers itself. I have some essentials for the new implementation, things you need to know about the tooling, the same as for the system conversion, you get an idea what are the most common tools and how they work together and how, uh, how should a technical project look like. I conclude the session then actually with an overview about the sub-readiness check for S4HANA and uh, then we have a short summary. So let's step into that session and talk about S4HANA. And you have seen when you come from ERP, there are a lot of things which are different with S4HANA. So S4HANA on one hand is a next generation digital core, that means enterprise management, the license you get, and you see that S4HANA system is actually utilizing exclusively our in-memory technology, the HANA database, and that gives us the ability to on one hand allow real-time processing of data and combine this transaction processing with, with real-time analytics. So we have both things now in one system. That means we can real-time report on your existing data. Instead of actually extracting data and reporting on the dead data, we can instantly do this in the system on, on, in, in, in real-time. We have a simplified data model which allows us actually to utilize HANA to its best from a performance perspective. And this also has helped us actually reduce the memory footprint in the system and, and also to simplify the technical representation, representation of our business objects. All this actually helps us then actually to implement the, uh, a more intelligent automation, the insight and prediction capabilities, as well as actually to, to, to cover those industry best practices in one system without actually the need of using add-ons or switching on business functions, uh, like you may know it from uh, the former ERP system. We realized this by a new architecture of our application. So a lot of our, our applications you know from ERP have been uh, actually redesigned. You realize, will realize it, that we did, did some incompatible changes, so there will be new transactions replacing some deprecated transition, uh, transactions. Uh, we have a new data model, so some, some, ta uh, some tables you may know where you report on or where you have custom code on have been replaced by new tables. Uh, we'll talk about this when we talk about simplifications. Uh, we have a cloud and on-premise deployment model, so we have one code line, but we offer you different ways actually to use that system either on-premise at your site or with different cloud options. There's a new UI technology, namely Fiori, digital assistance, natural language conversions, intelligent automation. So a lot of in, in, in innovations we, we in, implement in this besides what you classically know from a classical ERP system. And of course, sub s for hana as a digital core is also a, a part of this new intelligent enterprise framework. And it's a new product line. That means actually when you move from ERP to S4HANA, it's not an upgrade. It's really shifting actually between one and the other product with a license. And we, we, we do this actually because then we can actually implement those disruptive innovations which you then can consume and can improve actually your business processes to actually to be equi best equipped actually to run in this modern economy and, 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 and perform your digitalization inside your company. 
Uh, the classical SAP business suite as such, that means namely the ERP system, but also supply chain management, supply relationship management, CM, you name it, will still be available and has its own maintenance cycle. So the, uh, as mentioned, we have different deployment models. You can choose sub s Cloud, sub s Cloud Single Tenant Edition, or sub s On-Premise. And you see there are differences actually how and also, we deliver actually out of the same code line, the same functionality. There are differences actually in the business scope. So, with s Cloud, you have a, a smaller business scope at, at the moment than with an s on premise system. The business processes are much more standardized in the cloud. Uh, you, you're running only on a core ERP system, whereas in, in, in an s on premise system or a single tenant edition, you're much more flexible. Uh, you have more degrees of freedoms in terms of customize your application, add, ex, add additional code and um, adopt uh, the system to your needs. Uh, the innovation lifecycle is different. So s Cloud offers quarterly releases. In, in a single tenant edition, we have actually two releases per year, which we, we offer. And in, in s on-premise, we offer actually one major release per year. And you see also from the governance, from the IT infrastructure perspective, uh, there are differences. Customization is, on, is not is only allowed within standards in the cloud system, whereas actually in, in an on-premise system, you, we are even open to modifications. Extensions are more or less possible in all of those things in, in the same way, uh, actually with the a, with a SCP, with the SAP cloud platform, as well as inside in, in uh, your peer system, and uh, there are also differences actually in the system delivery, and I come to this uh, when we talk about the transition scenarios. Good. This slide illustrates a little bit the release strategy. As mentioned, s Cloud, four release shipments per year, which you have to consume, so we implement those updates automatically in the system. Uh, this, ha uh, this happens actually without any need for you to do something. Um, in s on-premise, we offer one major release per year, followed by so-called two feature pack stacks, which are functional roundups to that one with smaller innovations. At this one, um, in typically in four months, um, time, time, time shift from the release, and then around about after one year, there will come the new release, and from this onwards, actually the existing, the formerly existing actual release is going actually in, in maintenance, and we support this maintenance line via support packages. So at the moment, uh, the most actual release is 1909 on premise. We shipped this last Friday. And we expect that around the same time frame next year, in September, October time frame, we will have the next major release in on-premise, which will be called 2020, not 2009. So here we change a little bit the naming to make it clearer. One release per year, so we name it just like the, re uh, like the year. And then on and cloud, we have the releases renamed always like with months and years. So a 1908 cloud release is, of course, shipped in an October and uh, 2019. And the next release you expect would be actually uh, the, the 1911 release in the cloud, which then will be shipped in November this year. Down on that slide, on the right-hand side, you see that there are some important links I put on that slide. So I will do it on the next slide as well and, um, to give you more information. So here I put in actually the release information notes for the 1909 release and the release restriction note. This is the entry point from the notes perspective to see actually what are the technical dependencies, what are the limitations you need to know when you actually uh, when you start actually using that release, no matter if you do an implement a new installation or an upgrade or a system conversion. There's also this uh, this link to the restrictions and recommendations with, in regards to the uh, to the HANA database. So what are the what are the released HANA versions for for that release? And concluding into uh, uh, that slide actually is the link to the release and maintenance strategy paper from SAP, which illustrates this whole release strategy more in detail. So let's talk about the transition option as such. That means your way to uh, sub S for HANA. Um, in principle, it depends actually on, on your, uh, the approach you want to use, whether, when, uh, whether you actually uh, focus on reuse as much as possible in your, S4, uh, in, your, in your S4 HANA system from that what you have actually gained in ERP system. Or in other words, in your ERP system, most of your business processes are still good enough. But you want, want to innovate based on those, on, on, those, uh, on, on, on the, those business processes and add maybe machine learning, Fiori dashboards, embedded analytics, and, and you name it. All those things actually which come with S4 HANA. In that case, you very likely would choose a, what, a thing which you call the system conversion which offers you an in-place, one-to-one technical conversion of that ERP system into an s system. And uh, as such, 
Um, if, you, if you come from an on-premise ERP system and you go actually then to this S4HANA system, you end up with an on-premise S4HANA system. So this is an option which is only possible if you stay on-premise or if you may take this on-premise system and put this on a hyper-scale hyper environment, which is also kind of a cloud, but not a cloud in the way how we understand cloud. The second part is re-engineering. Re-engineering means classical also greenfield, whereas actually the system conversion would also be called as brownfield. Re-engineering means uh, you want to start from scratch. That means actually you start with a fresh S4HANA system, which, which is either installed on premise or you, you, you got this provision in the S4HANA cloud on a single tenant cloud edition. And uh, in that system, you start actually building up your, your business process from new benefiting from actually best practice content, which we offer. So using those best practice and you start with this clean core. And then actually you do a data migration of the data, which is relevant for you in, into that system. This is called a new implementation, and this is possible actually in all deployment models. Cloud, Cloud Single Tenant Edition, and s on-premise. And um, this also means, a green field typically means um, that, you, that you start your business new from scratch, which we uh, would say you take over your master data, and you open items and a SALDI, and you, and you close actually the last period in your old system, and start your new business as a new fiscal period in the next system. And with that procedure, you're not necessarily taking historical data with you. If you, are, if you require historical data, or if you want to have a more selective, more flexible approach, then we have a different option, which is also a kind of a data migration option, and we call it selective data transition. This is at the moment possible only in, in, in S4HANA on-premise as a target, and very likely also we would have this available for single tenant edition, at least we have this in our scope. It's a more customer-tailored approach, Selective data transition also means you require some re-engineering, but not a complete re-engineering. So you can say a system conversion uh, you would actually use for start uh, actually a rapid modernization based on your business process, a technical uplift which enables you to connect actually to the new innovations. New implementation means a complete business model innovation, whereas selective data transition means you only selectively actually want to optimize certain business processes. And you cannot approach, uh, you cannot actually fulfill this by a system conversion because maybe some customization and, and some existing data hinders you actually from doing a, a, a radical, uh, let's say, redesign of one, uh, one or the other business process. And you do not want to do a complete redesign via a new implementation. So in other words, system conversion brings a new business process to a new platform. It's a technical approach. And the good thing is it enables you then actually to innovate at your own speed. And this is also important to understand because once you're on a new platform, you, do only, you only need to do the necessary things to move your business processes and your custom code to the new platform. From this onwards, actually, you can independently from this one actually innovate. So you, you add a Fiori application here, you add embedded analytics there, you add a machine learning scenario to another one. Uh, so you can do this actually in, in those portions we, which you can digest as, be, as best and which fits actually to, to your budget and to, 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 your, to your resources. And important to understand, system conversion is a standard procedure. We offer tools for this. You can run this on your own with this procedure with a partner of your choice or actually also with SAP as a partner, but the delivery model is actually included in the shipment and it's tool boys. New implementation, the greenfield, uh, as you see, it can come from an ERP system, but also from a legacy system and can, in, can end up actually in any kind of de uh, deployment model. It's re-engineering process simplification based on our latest innovations. It's highly standardized. You can use best practices to do this and you do this based on the clean core. And um, also here, uh, the data migration is actually accomplished by a standard tool, by the migration cockpit. We have sessions for this as well here. Also, the delivery model here, is, is, the, the, the tools are included in the shipment, so no extra charge for the tools. And again, you can run this on your own. You can run this with a partner of your trust or with SAP as a trusted partner. Um, and the last option, the selective data transition, is, uh, is something where you have much, uh, a, a lot of degrees of freedom, what kind of data you want to select and how you actually want to, to design or compose actually your target system. But this is typically something where we need to combine standard tooling with expert functions which we only deliver as a service. So therefore actually the delivery model for a selective data transition is actually always via a consulting project or via a service engagement with SAP. So it's not a tool out of the box which accomplishes this. At the bottom here, I have a link. 
uh, a recommendation, things to read. Uh, there's, a, there's a white paper in, in, on sub.com called Mapping Your Journey to Sub S4 HANA, a practical guide for senior IT leadership. It's around a 90 pages document, which explains those different scenarios and offerings from SAP. So it's a written format of my, of my presentation, and you can take this actually also for, for reading this and understanding this um, on, 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 on a higher level. And then looking a little bit more in detail about the transition scenarios, system conversion. Um, the good thing about this is actually, it's a technical procedure, and it's a technical procedure which we have equipped with, with a lot of tooling. Where we, we offer tooling actually for analyzing your current situation, analyzing those areas which require uh, that you take action, and uh, tools which analyze you also the amount of objects which are affected, etc. PP. So you can do a very precise planning, and you have a very good forecast what you can expect when you run actually through this whole journey in doing a system conversion. The same as when it comes to the technical execution. The technical execution has built in checks which ensure that you have done necessary preconditional efforts and doing some migration and cleanup activities beforehand. So when the system, the technical conversion runs via the software update manager, we can ensure that, uh, that, that you do not destroy the system because I've missed something. So that means a system conversion is a highly planable and, 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 and let's say a, a very risk, a minimized risk approach which you can use. Uh, because of this, uh, uh, the existence of all those tools, we have tools actually checking the system requirements, we have the maintenance planner checking actually the your software stack, the add-ons in the system, the switch on business functions, we check actually which simplification items, and we'll explain this a little bit later, will hit you, that means we are relevant for you. We help you to identify the custom code which needs to be adopted and uh, the things you need to do in order actually to, to prepare your system application-wise for this technical conversion before we run the conversion. And we also guide you through the application-specific follow-up follow -up activities. Also here you see actually an, an SCN block uh, uh, which explains this procedure at a glance and the related session which explain the use of the software update manager. There are two hands-on sessions and, uh, sorry, there are two lecture sessions and one hands-on session. New implementation is also driven by the tool when it comes actually to the system provisioning because before you do a data migration, you have to have a target system. Yeah? So target systems either actually is, 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 is realized by installing the system on-premise or actually by, by ordering or provisioning that system in the cloud from SAP. Uh, and then once the system is there, you, um, you would actually configure your business processes, you validate your business processes, and once, you, you know, once you're satisfied with this one, then you do this initial data load, and this data load is accomplished typically by, by the sub s hana migration cockpit, which is our recommended tool of choice, and can also be complemented by SAP data services or by a sub advanced data migration by ADM. Those additional tools, data services, and advanced data migration could, uh, could offer additional in, uh, help in, in terms of also data extraction, data cleansing, and data harmonization, uh, which, is, which is very useful before you actually then load the data in, in, into your system, especially when you also, uh, let's say, consider to use da uh, data from different sources when you want to merge systems or merge some, some entities into one resulting as for HANA system. Um, the question was, for if, if, if for the system conversion approach you would need or you require consulting help or consulting support, no. Um, of course, you can, if, if, you, if you do not feel that you have the, the skills for this one, you can, you can buy additional support from us or from, actually from any partner of your trust, but it's not required. The same is also here for the, for the, for the new implementation or the migration cockpit. Okay, so let's talk shortly about the selective data transition as managed, uh, as already mentioned, this is, um, this is a consulting approach because you would discuss actually with a partner of your trust what actually should be the target architecture of your system, what data is relevant for you, what data you want to miss, what custom code you want to miss, and then actually you discuss about actually what, what tools we would use and which expertise is necessary. So this is something we can deliver from SAP, but also SAP is striving in a community about selective data transition, where we have, a, where we have, where we have those partners which you see at the moment engaged. Uh, so this is, this is a snapshot about the partner where we have engagement at the moment. And we try to work with those partners together in this community to standardize actually the, the, delivery, uh, the, uh, the delivery of this and also the quality of that, of that approach that you get from all those partners a similar experience. 
So I'm not going to talk more about this because here I cannot even ex express what kinds of tools. Some partners like uh, like SMP, they have their own data migration tools, the same as actually with CBS. Some others actually have combinations of SAP tooling and, and their own consulting tools. So it, it depends, but actually the, the goal is actually that at, at the end, you could deliver the same experience, the same quality. Then, at the moment we have talked about actually how you migrate your S4HANA system. And I've explained a little bit about the, the reuse and the brown, of brownfield and the re-engineering, also named as, as greenfield approach, and <coughs> so some so, so reasons and, and arguments why you would choose the one or the other. But this focuses just only on the S4HANA system. But typically your S4HANA system is surrounded by other systems. So if you have, you have a solution landscape, you, you have maybe other ERP systems, you have maybe third party uh, components, you have C, maybe CRM, SCM, uh, supply relationship management, where, uh, warehousing system, external warehouse, um, external transportation management system, you name it. So all these have maybe connections to the system and uh, you need to understand on one hand, some parts of those systems like a classical CRM, SRM system, AW system are part of this SAP business suite and also they have a lifetime. Yeah? Also they have an announced end of standard maintenance 2025. Uh, so you have to also consider something about this one as well as also you have to be aware that S4HANA is not only the uh, successor of the AP system, but it's also called the digital core. That means a lot of those functionality like the warehousing, transportation management, supply chain management, major parts of the SRM system are now included in the digital core and can be used out of that system because we actually put this together in, in order actually to, to be able to offer you the more modern business process and a better experience. Also parts of the CRM system when it comes to service management have been included. So that means this is something you need to also to consider when you have a landscape like this. You start with a transaction of your ERP application to S4HANA, but in the next step you also need to consider about the future of your system landscape and very likely you would successfully need to transform your current solution landscape based on those SAP business suite systems into a hybrid landscape which is around this S4HANA system, but maybe using modern things. So like for SRM, you very likely you do procurement in, your, in, in that S4HANA system and you may add a for guided buying, yeah? So that could be a solution for about this. And you need to migrate data and processes between those systems for this. How would you do this? That would definitely be too much to discuss in that session, but um, just to give you an idea, there is this so-called SAP Transformation Navigator, which helps you actually to describe your current solution landscape. So either it, it can read it out of your solution manager if you maintain the solution landscape in there, or you can just define this in the transformation navigator, and then the transformation navigator can map your current business suite oriented landscape into a modern landscape, and you can, you can put in preferences, like if you want to have more cloud, or let's say hybrid landscape, or as much as possible on premise, and gives you a valid, actually, successor landscape for, for, for those applications and those features and functions you're using, and how the landscape could look like. So to repeat the questions for the recording, um, I've put here on my slide actually a, a, an arrow from the third party product right into S4HANA Cloud. And the question was whether this is the only transition option. No, it's not the only one, it's just an example. So I'm not able to put all the possibilities into arrows here, it's just actually depicting a, an example. Yeah? So let, let us try to summarize this for the recording. So the question was, um, I, I, when I talk about digital core, I mainly, if I mainly actually position this as an S4HANA on-premise system, and uh, if an S4HANA cloud system is more a second tier. Yes and no. So typically, you have a much wider business scope or functional scope inside an on-premise system, but in principle, also an S4HANA cloud system acts as a digital core. Not to the same extent now than, an, than actually an on-premise system, if you look actually in combining those things, at, at, at the moment you would very likely prefer the on-premise on solution, but it's not a must. It depends on your business scope. So let's move on with the next topic and have actually our, also, let's say, the timing a little bit in, into my view. I want to talk about simplifications. So simplification are something which definitely hit you when you do a system conversion. But nevertheless, those incompatible changes will also happen when you do actually a new implementation and you migrate your data because you know that maybe some of the applications are not fun, uh, now not working anymore in the same way in when you do a, blue, uh, when a greenfield, uh, a greenfield uh, approach and you have to actually configure business processes differently. However, simplifications, a simplification item documents differences in the application functionality between the classical ERP system, maybe ERP 6.0 system, and S4HANA. So that means 
we have maybe changed the functionality, we have deprecated some functionality, we have successor functionality. We, we had in the past maybe different choices using, where you can use different engines and different systems to accommodate a certain business process, where we have done a simplification and have one only, and only, let's say, one option is left. So there could be different things and it's a, it's a disruptive change. And a simplification item documents this change in a way that we say for this and this application functionality, we have done exactly this change. Um, this is what happened. This is actually how you detect that you're affected about this, and, and these are actually the actions you have to take in order actually to, uh, to, to continue using this functionality and, 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 and configure actually the new functionality for you. So it's a textual description on one hand, and the textual description can be grouped, that means the list of all those simplification items is available as a document. You can read through this, and the good thing is you can also do full text search. So if you look for, you look for a particular functionality, you can do it via full text search or via the, uh, actually via the table of content. But it's also in a machine readable format. That means this simplification item provides uh, not only documentation, but also provides the input for a lot of tools, namely for the sub readiness check for S4HANA the sub ABAP custom code analysis as well as for the simplification item check. With these ones, actually, you, you can analyze your current ARP system and can find out which of those simplifications affects you. That means you're using a certain functionality where we have made a disruptive change. So you do not need to take care about all those 567 or 570 roundabout simplifications. We, have to, we deliver with 1909. Typically, you're only affected by, let's say, 60, 80, maybe 100 about those things, depending on the application which what you have implemented in the system. There's also a possibility to have an online access to the most current documentation of simplification items beside the PDF. It's the so-called simplification item catalog. You can access this via the launchpad, via that link here. Uh, so you can always look in on, 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 on the current state directly in the system. You see here a screenshot. Uh, it's grouped by the different uh, target releases, and then you can uh, either ha have a list of those items, or you can do also full text search. You can set filters on that, and then you get a list of those items online. There's a, the simplification list as such is available in the help portal. You see this is the second link. And I've provided you also two blocks which explain what are the most common simplification items you typically face as a customer. And uh, the other one is actually the one, it's a how to document how you actually work with the simplification item check, how you install this, how you, uh, how you manage your simplification. So. Talking about simplification item check, it provides basically two things. I talked about uh, relevance so far, but there's also consistency check. The checks are shipped as TCI nodes. There are two TCI nodes. One provides the relevance check, one the consistency checks. You can run these checks actually several times in the system or periodically, iteratively, to see also what is not, not only what is affecting your system, but um, you also learn about mandatory application-specific preparation steps you have to accomplish before you run the technical conversion. And via a periodic run those system, you can see what of those things you have already accomplished, which things are actually ready for the technical conversion. This is a part of the consistency check. So, and if you have not really worked on something which comes up with a consistency check in the right manner, um, this, this, this check will check uh, the check about those uh, about this thing, and it will prevent the system conversion from being started and then destroying the system. Uh, and again, if you start the software update manager as such, the software update manager will check actually if you meet this precondition two times. The first one is when, it, when, when in, in the uptime phase of this uh, of the so software update manager. The second time is actually at the beginning of the downtime will check again, and then you will not continue with the downtime phases unless everything is okay. <coughs> So let's come to the best practices. I've put in here some recommendations, and uh, for the sake of the time, I will not be able to provide every, everything in detail. You can also take this for a little bit for convenience reading. Nevertheless, the section here is about tasks we have to consider independent which transition scenario you use. Uh, so the first thing which is important is actually your data quality. Um, you need to know that S4HANA has much stricter consistency checks. You know, because we have a simplified data model and, and we reduce actually the, the amount of data we store, especially the redundancy of the data, which we formerly stored in a couple of tables, now we re require that the application is much stricter, which means if you would just take your current data in a system which works fine in the ERP system, very likely a, 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 a significant amount of this data would cause problems or would cause actually error messages when we try to do a conversion because in, in, in a sense or in the data model of an S4HANA system, the data is not consistent. Yeah? So 
one thing you need to con consider and you need to plan when you run this project, no matter if it's a new implementation or a system conversion, is actually that you have actually a pre-project which actually takes care about your data quality. You can check this data quality, for instance, when you do a system conversion project by doing test conversions. Yeah? You take a copy of your production system or a sandbox system, you run through a system conversion, you see about the errors, you learn about systematic errors, things about you need to correct, you correct the data in the production system, do the next iteration, see if you're good or you still need to do something. With that one, you would also be able to detect systematic errors. That means a, a wrong customization, which maybe reads to also to affect where, where you also always create new data, actually, which is not consistent, and so on and so forth. Simplifications. As just learned, simplification describes those incompatible changes, and they're important, actually, for the system conversion. Uh, but, but you can also learn from this, actually, that these incompatible changes happen, and you have to facilitate this when you do the design uh, in, in a new implemented system. Simplification means, here we talk about application changes. That means, actually, Whatever kind, uh, whatever kind of scope your project has, it's not a, it is not a pure IT project. It requires actually that you bring knowledge, the knowledge of your function, of your application functionality in, in the project. That means you have to include actually your, your functional areas as well, your business process owners, etc. PP, uh, because sometimes you have to make business decisions and you have to have to uh, you, you have some efforts actually in the functional area to to accommodate actually those changes on, according to simplification items. Hana data. Database. If you move the first time to s hana as a database, um, you have to actually to learn about how to operate this one, backup and recovery, performance, tuning, etc. PP, and the efforts are similar, the same for this. And this is something that you, you should not underestimate. Talking about interfaces. Interfaces means um, if you're doing a system conversion, uh, and you convert your system ERP to s hana most of the standard interfaces between applications, that means interfaces to supply chain management, to the warehouse management system, IDOC interfaces, I means all those standard interfaces are literally the same and do not require much effort. It, you can do regression testing, but typically you would not expect any, any major efforts in, in, in realizing any changes. It's different when you have own custom interfaces where directly access data via, via directly accessing tables, uh, and here you could actually, uh, you, 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 have, you can run in those problems where you have actually changed the data model and you have to invest times actually in, in identifying those issues. Very likely you would see this actually when you do custom code analysis, but depending also on the technology. So there is some certain investment necessary for, for actually for, uh, for, for repairing those things and for testing. If you do a greenfield approach, you have to be aware that you have to re-implement all those interfaces as well. That means here you start from scratch. That means it's also a big asset in the system conversion that most of the interfaces are still, uh, still available. New implementation specific best practices. On one hand is actually we offer best practice content, but we offer also model company. Model company is actually industry specific template, that means customizing templates which you can use, which are actually the best practices for a given industry, like for utilities or for whatever, you, you, you name it, oil, gas, uh, environment, health, and so on. Um, and you can benefit from this actually in using those templates and starting actually, starting your implementation by using this template and, 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 change, and only changing those things where you see your competitive advantage or actually things you need to change. This allows much faster implementation, shortening definitely significantly your discovery and implementation phase. It results in a higher fit to standard, which is important when you're in the cloud. Just a second. And um, because this model company is also built to cloud standards, and even if you use it on-premise, you have a question. The question was about the simplification list and how you deal with this and how you act in the, on, on this in the system. Um, I would like to delay this question to the slide when we talk about the, uh, about the readiness check because then it's easier to explain that. Uh, so just to continue here, apart from this, actually the best practice customization, the other thing by new implementation is a clean core. So our recommendations here, actually when you do a new implementation, especially when it's on-premise, where you will have all the degrees of freedom to do so, you all a clean, keeping a clear core, applying a zero modification, policy is a good idea. So that means do not do any modification as a P standard. Use whenever actually you want to change anything, use APIs instead of actually modifying any code or copying SAP objects. Yeah? Where you, so sometimes you copy SAP objects, you modify this and use them instead, and you would not realize that after release change that actually SAP is changing those things. So APIs is a preferable method and also would allow actually that you do some of your custom development not only inside the SAP system, but in, for instance, based on a cloud platform via the API. API. API is stable, and you decouple actual release cycles of the SAP software from your release cycles. 
Um, other success factors. As mentioned, as for HANA project, implementation project, even if you say I'm only doing the minimal scope with a an, uh, with an technical uplift via system conversion, it requires the, uh, the in an inclusion of the functional staff. I mentioned this. Uh, so either you have the expertise on board or you have to take care that you have actually application consultants which you can, uh, which you can actually uh, utilize in that manner. I mentioned this consistency checks already, so in that case the slides are a little bit redundant. Um, the good idea here is really uh, doing test conversions, and when I say test conversions, I mean actually not only doing the technical conversion part with a sum and trying to optimize the downtime, but going through the whole part also in, also, uh, in, uh, in doing the application-related pre pre preparation step as well as the post-upgrade steps to learn about those things, to see if you made the right decisions, if your data is consistent, so involve also the business people in that one. Uh, create a runbook or scripting about those things which you can refine, and then you get a pretty forecastable, actually, uh, productive uh, system conversion. Some more things for system conversion. Archiving is always a good idea, but not only for system conversion. The less data you have actually to move, uh, the, less, uh, uh, the less is the runtime or the less is the downtime, but also actually the number of data you have to clean. Yeah, so if, if you are able to archive data, a lot of, let's say, old data, old periods, old years, which you do not want to do, also you do not need to take care about cleansing that data. Third-party products, so if you use add-ons in a system, SAP add-ons always have a successor in S4HANA. Most of those add-ons which we have on our SAP prices have a successor in, S4, uh, let's say, for S4HANA. Maybe not at the day where we have our, uh, where we have our release shipment, but usually within the first, six, first three, months, three, four months after actually initial shipment of a release. But you also have to look on other add-ons, and you have to realize if you do plan a system conversion, you have add-ons in the system uh, where, where the supplier of that add-on do not offer a successor of this one, this blocks your system conversion. And you either have to find out how you clean, can clean out this add-on by your deinstall if it's offered, yeah, or you have actually to take care that you address this issue with, your, with the vendor. Fiori is a good thing in embedded analytics, which you can add very easily actually to a system conversion approach to add some, some added value to an, just an IT-driven project because uh, because this is something end users actually appreciate highly much because it, it, it increases their efficiency in working. If you implement Fiori, usually you have actually to build up some knowledge for this. So you have a, 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 somebody who takes care, has an expert knowledge about Fiori and when it comes to implementation, as well also it, it, when it deals actually with authorization, authorization roles. So Fiori is actually a role-driven interface. As we have incompatible changes, maybe your authorization concept and your roles you have defined in ERP are now have gaps because of deprecation of objects and additional new functionality. So you have to work actually on authorization and then you need to address this. The opportunity to replace custom code, the less custom code you take with you, the less efforts you will have in the future about, uh, about from upcoming releases and, and, and the less actually you have to adopt actually to the S4HANA. When you're using BW extractors, there's a simplification item here, which is mentioned here, but also with a hyperlink, which gives you in an attachment Excel sheets with lists about which BW extractors in the different applications areas are still working, which are deprecated, which are not working. So you take the, you need, need to take this as one as an analysis and um, act according to this one. When we talk about scripting and forms, uh, if you migrate to S4HANA via system conversion. Um, the existing forms you have actually via subscript or subforms will still work. Nevertheless, you have to be aware that the way forward is Adobe Document Services, which means it's a good idea actually to create new forms already with Adobe Document Services and you do changes, maybe do this with one, but you can, in first order, you can keep all your assets, yeah? so there's not immediate need. Uh, last thing, it's also something which you need to be aware of, the system conversion as such is actually moving your data from the old data structures into new data structures. This is done automatically. By moving, but moving means not necessary. It's taking the data and it's deleting the data in the old structures. We're not going to do this. We're rather copying the data for the sake that when, if, if the conversion breaks or if, if you have any problems, that you can, that you have look up and that you have the possibility to repair this. Yeah? But nevertheless, you have a redundant data then in the system. Some of the data is dead, and this has maybe a, a significant memory footprint. So it's a good idea once you have done your simplification, uh, your conversion project, 
that, um, that afterwards, actually, and, and you feel confident with the system that you clean out the data and you find here the measure. So the, I've put in some, uh, some OSS notes, uh, which you can read, actually, which explain how you can delete out the data in the system, namely with the obsolete data handling tool or actually some specific application things. So the question, the question was, actually, if you archive data on the ERP system already and you do a system conversion, can the data be accessed later in the S4HANA system? Yes, it can be accessed via the archiving uh, interface. So we, we translate, we translate the, the data from the old data model actually in, into an archiving format. And the, interf the archiving interface is able to, turn, when you later want to read this data from the S4HANA system, to retranslate actually the data from the archiving format into a new SOP data format. So talking about some other findings. A system conversion project, if you look actually on the, on the amount of our customers, we look on statistics, those projects are in average shorter and cost less than a new implementation because as mentioned, a new implementation in Greenfield is always a big bang, where system conversion projects are usually more, most of the time just a startup project and you do innovations a little bit later. Um, nevertheless, you see it's a very quarter and an achiever. Um, a lot of customers ask us actually whether it's a good step to first of all focus on s finance and do the other things later. Um, if you look a little more in detail on this and also let's say our experience from customer project means Implementing s Finance requires that you also define the, the, the interfaces to logistics, to, uh, to, to human resources, and to some other things, which also has an effort in the same amount than you would actually do a full s implementation. And if you do this beforehand, and you do an s implementation, actually you have to actually two huge projects. So, there. so there, typically there's no benefit. Exception cases are possible. A phased approach is possible. You can do this either via doing a, a system, con that means if you have a global single instance, uh, where all this is one system, you can do a system conversion with just a pure focus on a technical implementation. And then you can innovate actually by the different business units on your own, or you do it actually via uh, doing a, a new implementation and then actually do a phased implementation by doing data migration, uh, let's say company code wise or, or client wise into that system. Nevertheless, you have to be aware about the fact that, um, that if you do a phase approach that you have a coexistence of two system landscapes and that there very likely are interfaces in between because you never get a clean cut between actually org units and other things between the system. So it's, it's something which requires a lot of efforts and it's not necessarily supported by SAP standard interfaces. Yeah? Other, que other the question is, as a, uh, I'm, going, I'm on the ERP of any database. Does it make sense actually to first go on suite on HANA and then on S for HANA? Um, that has no benefit because the data model changes happen actually with S4HANA and the reduction of the memory footprint happens actually with the simplification of the data model. So there's basically no real benefit. The only benefit is actually you may learn from actually from the HANA operation beforehand. And if you're, if you're not already in Unicode, you can combine actually this ERP uh, this ERP suite and HANA upgrade with Unicode conversion can save some downtime. But besides this, you do not learn anything from in the case of application, and you do not make any savings actually in, 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 from the application perspective. Last thing on that slide, important to understand is actually when you do a, do a system conversion to S4, we are not going to allow system conversion to releases which are older actually than the latest two releases. So latest two releases means stable core. So in our case, actually, now with the existence of 1909, we have a stable, we have a stable 1809 release, feature pack two, and we have a stable 79 release. So with the existence of this one, actually, where we are going to block the system conversion of 1511 and 1610. And you would realize this also if you re read actual release information out of those releases. And we will continue this in the future. So with, with the existence of 2020, we will actually then block 1709 and so on. Just to make it short, because actually I have to a little bit on our pace. Um, yes, so when we talk, when I said actually the system, uh, system conversion projects are an average shorter, then we have a statistic. And this contains actually a lot of, let's say, technical uplift projects together also with system conversion projects with a full scope. But in that mix, and also that mix has an impact, but also, let's say, the technical guidance by the tools have an impact. So an average system conversion projects are several months shorter and a new implementation project by all those different by all those different effects which could go into that one. But you're right, typically a greenfield approach has a has a has a richer scope. And this is one of the main driving factors, but not the only one. Okay. So actually to have a short time check, in order to allow you some questions, I would like actually to go or some things a little bit quicker. Facility migration project with Sapana migration corporate. So we're talking about new implementation. 
So a new implementation means really you have to provision a new system and then the tool of choice for migrating your data is actually the migration cockpit as for HANA. We offer pre-configured migration content. That means typically for the standard SAP business objects, you do not need to do any programming. We have the mapping rules which map actually your data from the old data model to the new data model, and you only need actually to select actually a business object, and we take care about that they will be converted uh, automatically. Uh, the migration cockpit new implementation is integrated in the SAP Activate methodology, but this is also true for, 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 the, uh, for the system conversion as well as for selective data transition. We have an implementation methodology to explain you how you should run a project, what are the different things you consider, accelerators, etc., PP, you name it. So therefore, actually, all this is covered. There are dedicated sessions for the migration cockpit here at TechEd. You see those two sessions mentioned uh, below on that slide. Yeah, and that's basically actually all I want to cover at this point of time. Uh, important to understand also, besides the pre-configured content we deliver, for the on-premise case, we offer a so-called migration object modeler, which allows you actually to modify and to enhance uh, those predefined migration objects to your need, because you've maybe also done custom enhancement to those things. And you can even create new objects, things where you actually, where you actually can where you can fill some still existing gaps actually for some industry solutions in, in taking actually the industry specific adoption of a material or let's say of a SD document and you can do this enhancement. Or you can even create completely new, sorry? What about metrics? Metrics like SMW is not, uh, is not supported anymore. Uh, the question is whether you can write own programs for data migration. Yes, it's possible, but that means you have a tool which is fully supported by SAP. And the good thing about migration, of the migration cockpit is um, when, we, when, when we load that data into the s uh, s system, we actually hand over the data to the application logic and let the application logic post the data. So we can be sure that the data is consistent all the times. System conversion. Some essentials you need to know. There are some technical prerequisites. So prerequisites on a source system is actually, it should be a Unicode system. And it could be any SAP ERP 6.0 system on any enhanced package on any support package level. But it should be Unicode. It should be a single stack system. HANA database is not required, so you can start also with any database. Important to understand is, for customers which are running suite on HANA and planning to do a system conversion to 1709 or higher, uh, and in your suite on HANA systems running on HANA 1.0, you have to do the HANA upgrade from 1.0 to 2.0 beforehand. It's not, you cannot be combined with the system conversion. Prerequisites on the target system, since S4 HANA 1909 and also 1809 is based on a so-called SAP ABBA platform, which is not a, a, a full NetViewer stack, but it's a NetViewer stack, especially dedicated actually only for S4 HANA. We have also changed actually the, the, the platform, OS, the OS platform availability. So there could be the, it could happen that you're running, let's say, on a, on a certain hardware which is no longer supported. Yeah? And in order to find this out, you have to look actually in, in the product availability matrix or in, into the release information node here in both of this, this is mentioned. System conversion as a project as such, you see here on that slide, you see the planning phase, the preparation phase, then realization phase. and the realization phase, we're talking about actually the software update manager, the SUM. For the SUM, we have several sessions. Uh, available here at TechEd, which you can use. You see this here, uh, which I mark here with my mouse, the CAA 113, 202, and 261. When it comes to custom, to custom code preparation, two sessions here, CAA 364, as a hands-on session, and the lecture, CAA 203. Uh, simplification item check, I just mentioned this one. Um, you see here other tools which have been a preparation phase, the transformation navigator, the accelerated, uh, the, the activate roadmap the readiness check, simplification item catalog. You have here hyperlinks where you find more information on our websites. And for the readiness check, there's also a dedicated session here as, uh, as, at, at TechEd. Good, let's bring me directly to the readiness check. Just some words on the readiness check. The readiness check is an SAP self-service tool, free of charge, which you can use which you can use to make an analysis about your current situation of the system in terms of the system requirements, the sizing of the HANA system, uh, the installed software components, that means add-ons on the system, switch on business functions, simplification items which hit you, and actually the efforts you have to spend for custom code adoption. 
and also some quality about your business processes. So you can run this actually while you're, in inst while you're installing several, uh, several SAP nodes in your system. And you see here on the bottom, you see actually the info documentation, the help portal, how you install and run the check, as well as a related SAP node. There's also a session about this one. And as a result of this, of this running this check, you get a dashboard, which is uh, nicely displaying displaying actually the results of this. You see this here on that screen, the different area, the relevant simplification items, how the other simplification item grouped in the different topic areas, what you need to take care about before the object, what you, uh, before the transition, and be in, uh, uh, or post upgrade activities, uh, post conversion activities, what kind of skills are necessary and so on and so forth. So you see a lot of those things. You can click on this, you get detailed information, you can create a Word document with a as a detailed report out of this as well. And you can take this actually for your project planning. You can always rerun the readiness check because then you can also monitor actually what of those things you have accomplished. This is a new feature in readiness check 2.0 that you can use this also for monitoring the project uh, success. The difference between the readiness check and the simplification item check is in both we run the simplification item check. The readiness check is just only for monitoring, whereas the simplification item check is a mandatory part of actually of the process of running the conversion, and it's also run by the software update manager to, to ensure that you have met all the prerequisites. Yeah? So this makes a difference. So, so the simplification item check adds also the system consistency check to ensure that your system is ready. Having that said, that brings me now to the summary. And what are the points you should take away? Uh, one thing is actually I mentioned this document, Mapping Your Idea in Journal, which is, gives you a nice summary of the session in a written format. You should familiarize yourself with available tools, which would you support a transition project, no matter if it's a system conversion or, uh, or a new, new implementation. Um, the SAP Roadmap Viewer provides you access to the complete activate methodology, gives you all the necessary tasks, explain what needs to be done, what are the skills level, gives you, uh, gives you ideas about available SAP services, which you can use actually if you do not want to accomplish something on your own. The transformation navigator you can use for guidance how you actually map your current system landscape to a future system landscape to a SFRNA plot centric, uh, centric roadmap. System conversion specific. Start your project planning by running this sub readiness check very early because it gives you all the areas where you have to take action, especially also the add on, from, uh, the add -on topic and on the other topics. So do this early. And you can base your, or you can validate your project planning based actually on the findings in here. The maintenance planner, you, you need to run and you need to understand to con confirm that your SAP ERP system is ready and can be technically converted. That for all software installed in system, you have a tech, uh, you have a proper, consistent, actually successor software stack. The simplification item checkers manage to do it also as soon as possible because some of those business process adaptations like customer vendor integration, uh, then the migration to the business partner is a very time consuming effort. Yeah? So the, the earlier you identify those things, you take care and take action on those things, uh, the easier it is actually uh, to, to actually keep your timelines. And as mentioned also, start early with those preparation and cleanup activities which has to do with, the, with your data quality. Yeah? Very important. Custom code. ABAP test cockpit is something where you need to familiarize yourself with this one. And you find here also a block which gives you more information on that one. And uh, here's a page which also explains a bit more about the roadmap. Um, you can just click on this and you end up actually directly in, in, in our HTML version of the roadmap and, uh, and our support portal. Good. This brings me basically to the end of my session. Um, I just also want to say, if you want to get actually the material of the session, you can either download this as the PDF of the session Tagged community, and you see here more information. I listed here all the related sessions which you offer a ticket for the dedicated topics like readiness check, system conversion, new implementation, custom code adaption. You see this one. Then, then just, a, just just a second before I take your question, as you see here, I have put in a lot of slides with additional information where you can benefit from, where you can have more information and read through this, which also fits to the nature of that session. Do you need to have the you do not need to have a license for the readiness check, but you need to have a license for running a simplification item check. Because downloading the simplification item catalog requires a license. Thanks. <laughs>